What's going on guys, Sticks here with the Token Minorities bringing you the battle for week 2 of season 7 of the CPC and this week we are up against none other than my good friend Tone and his Cleveland Indiancies and before I get into the team, just a reminder that if you guys like this video please leave a like, drop a comment, click that subscribe button as it helps us out a ton and lets us do more cool stuff for you guys. So. Yeah, like I said, we're up against Tone, and it's unfortunate because Tone is one of my good buddies, and quite frankly, so much of my front office is in the CPC this season. I mean, not just majors, although there's three or four of my front office in majors in addition to a couple other really good friends that had just joined this year. So that's unfortunate as I lost a lot of my FO that way. But yeah, Tone in particular was one that I did not want to face as I do have a ton of respect for his battling style. And also I really, really like his team. And by like his team, I mean I'm ab absolutely terrified by that. And also it's basically like, it's, I don't know, you'll see what I mean. In fact, you can probably already see what I mean when I say I really like his team because there are three bonds from my last season team on there. And it has a lot of similarities as it were but his team does consist of Garchomp, Necrozma, Terrakion, Thunderous T, Ferrothorn, Mega Pidgeot, Chandelure, Primarina, Drapion, and Piloswine or Piloswine. Quite frankly I'm going to switch between both of those quite often in the team builder. I mean just just being honest like that's what I go for although I'll probably say Piloswine a little bit more and yeah it's it's scary. I mean, Necrozma, Ferrothorn, Mega Pidgeot I had on my team last year, and then Garchomp was a mom that I wanted, but unfortunately did not get. Terrakion is a mom that I'm always a fan of, and much in typical tone fashion, he has a... He has a relatively slow team. Only a single mon is above base 110, and that is the Mega Pidgeot, so... That doesn't mean that it is going to be that it's it, that doesn't mean it's going to be easier because I mean look at his team that is absolutely terrifying like I said that before but it really is I mean Terrakion unfortunately two hit KOs every single bond on my team with rocks up I mean think even maybe even defensive Araquanid I think it's two hit KO'd by banded close combat I mean Terrakion is just stupid powerful so that's going to be something that's really difficult to play around and something that I'm definitely going to have to watch out for in addition to mons that just hit insanely hard in and of themselves like Thunderous T, Primarina, Garchomp um, with the Z and if I didn't say Drapion and Garchomp are the Z's I think I said it but I don't know maybe I'm just losing my mind but yeah everything on his team can hit so hard Necrozma is one of my favorite mons in the entire format I hate the fact that I have to go up against it particularly with my team not being able to like I don't know I don't have anything on my team that just deals with it really well I mean Hydreigon was a mon that I definitely thought of in this matchup as you can see it's not something that I'm going to end up bringing just because his team is so synergistic that I literally cannot lock uh, my Hydreigon into any one move oh, so first of all it was going to be Choice Scarf like it had to be Choice Scarf 98 speed against a Garchomp Terrakion and Thunderous T like no no it's it's going to be Choice Scarf but if I lock it into Dark Pulse well Terrakion gets free justified if I lock it into Dragon, well, that's a free Primarina. If I lock it into, like, Flash Cannon or some other coverage move, well, that's a free Ferrothorn. And then if I just go for U-Turn, well, I'm not exactly exuding a whole lot of pressure. So, yeah, I mean, Hydreigon looked really good in this matchup. But unfortunately, when you actually, like, got into practice or, like, when you got right down to it, it just was not able to click any one move without him being able to exploit that really, really hard. So, yeah, this is going to be a tough matchup. But that being said, my Nido King and my Alolan Raichu both have excellent matchups, in my opinion, assuming I click the right move in the right situation. So that's going to be what I center my team around, is trying to win with either Nido King sweeping late game, I'm going to be running a Choice Scarf variant, uh, spoilers, or a Lowland Raichu being able to clean up or get momentum early on or break. Just basically one will break for the other. So the first mod that I have is a Ferium Z Tapu Koko with U-Turn, Dazzling Gleam, Thunderbolt, and HP Fire. Dazzling Gleam with the Z is able to essentially just pick up a KO against something on his team with a little bit of chip damage or at least get a heavy hit off on something once Ferrothorn is removed. And in order to get Ferrothorn removed, we have the HP fire. So it's just kind of like I started off 
thinking of like a calm mindset, but I figured that this set, just getting momentum and breaking his team would be much more beneficial for me. So that's ultimately why I decided, I decided to go with the set that I did U-turn, because he has two ground types that could very, very, very easily come against me, uh, Garchomp and Piloswine. Hopefully you can't hear the sirens outside. If you do, I apologize. But yeah, I mean, he has two ground types and he also has a Thunderous T, so he has three electric immunities and I don't want to give Thunderous T essentially free switching and like free recovery from rocks damage. No, no, no. I'd rather run U-turn and just get a little bit less chip damage off in certain situations. The speed is enough to guarantee to outspeed a Scarf Primarina because otherwise I would outspeed Terrakion and nah, rather outspeed a Scarf Primarina because that thing is actually very scary for me to deal with as my resist is Tangrowth, and Tangrowth has crap spadef, so even like just a regular Hydro Pump will do a lot, not to mention Moonblast or an Ice Beam. Through, well, maxed out my special attack so that I could hit as hard as possible, threw the rest into HP and actually decreased it by one so that I would take potentially one less damage from Stealth Rock. I didn't actually calc it out because, I mean, I'm lazy, but yeah, I just, I don't know, I went with an odd number just because I felt like it, and man, I guess that didn't fix itself, but either way, uh, 30... 31. 31. There we go. 31 investment in, or 31 IVs in my attack because I mean, I want to hit hard with U-turn even though I'm running timid. Next up, we have Tangrowth and this is going to be my attempted way of dealing with Terrakion as Tangrowth actually has a pretty solid shot to live two choice banded close combats after rocks. So I mean, I know that I said everything on my team potentially gets two hit KO'd. Well, Tangrowth has the best chance not to be two hit KO'd because of its massive defense and very, very, very good HP stat. So yeah, that's ultimately what I am. Man, why is, why are these? Yeah, those should not be, those should not be what they are right there. But either way, I mean, yeah, this Tangrowth is my way of dealing with Terrakion. It's also my way of dealing with Garchomp. And if I play this thing well, it can be an insane nuisance for his team, like knocking off things, leech seeding. I mean, leech seed is super free apart from Ferrothorn, and Ferrothorn, if I knock that thing off, is much easier for me to deal with. So yeah, that's what I really like about Tangrowth in this matchup. Just a huge nuisance for him. HP Ice is for the Garchomp. I de debated between HP Fire and HP Ice, but I decided that, okay, if this thing is supposed to be my way of taking on Garchomp, I want to be able to hit it really hard. So that's ultimately why HP Ice is there. And then Giga Drain is because, I mean, this thing's supposed to check Terrakion, so it better be able to take on Terrakion. The investment is enough to guaranteed live two choice banded close combats after leftovers without rocks up. I mean, with rocks up, there's no guarantee anyway. So I figured, okay, just throw that in there, then throw a tiny bit into Spidef. Maybe it'll make a difference at some point. Here we have my Needle King, and this thing is going to be Choice Scarfed with Ice Beam, Sledge Wave, Earth Power, and Fire Blast. Just that's the coverage I need for his team. I can potentially lock myself into Earth Power if I'm able to get rid of the Thundee T and Mega Pidgeot, which actually shouldn't really, well, it shouldn't, it should be very difficult for him to keep them beyond the early to mid game if he plays it the way I think that he will. So yeah, I'm looking forward to trying to click Earth Power to spam against his team. Also, I can potentially take out both of those things with Ice Beam and Sludge Wave if I predict correctly or even in a situation where I just catch them off guard, then Fire Blast is maybe like, if I'm able to get him into mind games, maybe I can just catch that Ferrothorn and knock that thing out in one fell sweep. I mean, the opportunity to just take out Ferrothorn is something I cannot pass up. The speed I'm actually being a bit aggressive on, so with my team, he would speed creep my Lycanroc with his Mega Pidgeot. Like, that's what I think he would try to speed creep. And so I am not only speed creeping a Mega Pidgeot, speed creeping a Lycanroc, I believe, now, hear me out on this, I believe I am speed creeping something that would be speed creeping my speed creep of his speed creep of my Lycanroc. So, if you followed that, great. If not, just know that I'm being very aggressive in my creeps, just adding a couple extra layers of mind games to that creep. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, that's what uh, Needle King is designed to do, and just hits insanely hard. Even without the Life Orb, like, I know it only hits 295, but its coverage is just fantastic, and Sheer Force does make up a little bit for that relative lack of base stats in Special Attack, and then just a decent amount of HP so that maybe I can switch in on a Choice Banded Close Combat if I need to. 
Here we have Swampert, and of course Swampert was going to come because Swampert Tangrowth has great synergy uh, with Stealth Rock, HP Fire, Scald, and Protect. HP Fire, obviously, for the Ferrothorn, Scald just spammable. Maybe I can get a burn off on something. Stealth Rock is very important for chipping things down, putting them in range of Nidoking and Raichu and Tapu Koko, and then Protect just to scout out moves, maybe even potentially burn an extra CC to where he'll eventually run out of them, maybe? Possibly? I don't know. But yeah, just Protect is nice for scouting, maybe burning the Z-move on Garchomp, because, I mean, unfortunately, an Inferno Overdrive Chomp does a lot of work against me, particularly to Tangrowth, so I don't want to have to just, like, sack something to that, or, like, even just a plus two Devastating Drake would be, well, devastating. So, yeah, Protect is a nice way of burning that. And as for the EVs, looks kind of complicated, but it's really not. 12 is just a little jump point in HP fire damage to Ferrothorn. 164 Spadef is to guarantee live a non-boosting item, Thunderous's Grass Knot, after Rocks. 20 speed just for a speed creep, and then maxed out my HP and threw the rest into defense. Next up is my Lycanroc with Accelerock, Firefang, Stone Edge, and Brick Break with the Life Orb. And you know how I said I wanted to get rid of his flying types? Well, Lycanroc does that incredibly well and also really just kind of puts pressure on his team. I mean, yeah, Garchomp can switch in because unfortunately Lycanroc does not get Ice Fang. It gets Fire Fang, but it doesn't get Ice Fang. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, uh, you gotta be kidding me. But still, this is a Mon that isn't forced out by a Choice Banded Trachyon coming in. Lycanroc can just be like, okay, well, I can outspeed you and hit you with a Tough Claws, Life Orb boosted Brick Break that might not necessarily take it out, but will put it very, very low to where it has trouble coming in. Additionally, Rock coverage. Rock and Fire do very well against him, bar the Garchomp, but any chip on Garchomp is good damage for me late game, potentially putting it in range of, like... Tangrowth's HP Ice, Nido, two Needle King Earth Powers, stuff like that. And then Fire Fang obviously is for the Ferrothorn. The Speed is for the Terrakion, and then threw the rest into my attack. Decreased my HP IVs a little bit to hit a Life Orb number, so I'm only losing 28 HP instead of 29. And then threw it into Defense just because, I mean, I'm going to be taking a physical hit. I'll probably be taking a Terrakion's Quick Attack or something to that effect. I will not be able to take any other move, but I don't know. Just Defense seemed to be the most worthwhile in this Lycanroc. And finally, we have my Alolan Raichu with a Life Orb. And this is in place of the Choice Scarf High Dragon, just because with Tapu Koko, Raichu doesn't always need to be a late game cleaner. It can be something that can just get you momentum in the early to mid game and can potentially sweep late game as well given the proper setup. So that's ultimately what I was going for with this Raichu. I wanted to keep the options of having fast momentum early in mid game, but I also didn't like the fact that Hydreigon literally just had to be clicking U-turn over and over. So Volt Switch Raichu came into the game or came onto this team because not only does, is Volt Switch pretty free, the two things that he can prevent Volt Switch with, Garchomp and Piloswine, are punished very, very heavily by Life Orb, uh, HP Ice, and Focus Blast, respectively. I hope I said Garchomp and Piloswine in that order, but either way, HP Ice for Garchomp, Focus Blast for Piloswine. Additionally, Psychic can be used to revenge Terrakion, and while I do need damage off on Necrozma, I need it actually pretty low for a Life Orb Volt Switch to be able to KO. Raichu is very, very good at just getting momentum and revenge killing, just basically ensuring that nothing that he has is going to be able to really just, like, really just sweep me by outspeeding me. The speed is enough to guaranteed outspeed Necrozma naturally, so that way if he's like a rock polish variant, once I get electric terrain up, Raichu will be able to outspeed that thing and hopefully KO it with a Volt Switch like I would think to... I would hope at that point that I got sufficient damage off to where a Volt Switch could KO, like I didn't just let him set up for free and still be at max HP, but you never know. Uh, it still just was a nice speed to hit on its own. Maxed out my special attack and threw the rest into HP. Didn't really bother hitting an HP number because, I mean, I'm, I'm close enough as well to 298. I mean, be taking 29 instead of 30. So, I mean, that's always nice. But yeah, that is the team. And let's just go ahead and hop right on over to the battle. Alrighty, here we are in the battle, and ultimately he ended up bringing about what I thought he would. I mean, I knew that Garchomp, and, Garchomp, Necrozma, Terrakion, Primarina, and Ferrothorn were pretty much givens. I mean, I felt pretty confident 
that all five of those would show up. I mean, Garchomp because, well, Garchomp and Terrakion both have very good matchups against me. Same with Primarina. Ferrothorn is necessary for the electric span that I have going. Necrozma is just amazing. Like, plain and simple, I love that mon. It's probably my second favorite mon. Eh, third favorite, because Swampert's still up there. But I don't know, I would actually probably pick Necrozma over Swampert in a given situation, but I'm getting off topic. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, all five of those, very good matchup against me. Uh, Primarina is essentially a dead stop to Hydragon, who, like I said, does very well against him, except if he brings the Primarina. And then Mega Pidgeot, I thought, could be could be either the Mega Pidgeot or the Thunderous T. Ultimately decided on the Mega Pidge. I mean, it could have gone either way. Both of them would be huge threats to me. But regardless, very, very scary team. I uh, was hoping not to see the Trachyon. Maybe my speed tiers could scare him out, but nope, that's not the case. So let's just go ahead and hop right on into it. I am going to lead off with my Swampert as he leads off with his Primarina. Just because, I mean, I wanted to get rocks up ASAP. I wanted to, uh, sorry, I hit the table. I wanted to start pressuring his team, get chip damage on the Mega Pidge, because as soon as I get rid of that thing, I can just spam Scarfed Earth Power and potentially get two hit KOs on quite a good amount of stuff on his team. He leads Primarina. Tone knows me. Tone knows that I love Swampert. Well, that I love leading with Swampert and I love like getting rocks up early to set the tone. And I'm thinking that if, huh, pun intended, but <laughs> I like leading Swampert. And if he's going to lead his pre Marina, it's going to have something that counters my Swampert. Now, it could just be as simple as HP Grass, but I know Tone. I don't think. Well, I know that Tone knows me, so he knows that Rindo Berry is not a sufficient way of taking out my pert and preventing rocks early. So I'm like, okay, what does he have up his sleeve? So I'm just going to protect here. If he has the HP Grass, then I can scout it out and react accordingly. But I'm just curious to see what this Primarina wants to do to start off as he actually has the Magic Coat. Now, that is a beautiful bring by Tone, because, I mean, I like to get my rocks up, like I said. So I'm just going to go ahead and fire off a Scald. Maybe I can get a burn on something. As he goes into his Ferrothorn, and I'm just thinking he's not going to go for the Power Whip immediately. I'm going to get up my rocks as he goes for the knockoff, and that's annoying, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Now I'm going to go into my Tangrowth. with my rocks are up. This is fantastic for me as he knocks off crits. It's not a big deal. I can fire off a knockoff of my own, maybe get rid of what I'm actually thinking is an Aqua Berry on his Ferrothorn, just based on the composition of his team. Um, well, first of all, we didn't see that Ferrothorn had an item. So immediately I'm thinking, okay, it's probably Aka because it's just so easy to run HP fire on my Tapu Koko. And Ferrothorn is his only real Coco answer because, I mean, Necrozma, Terrakion, Mega Pidgeot, Primarina, all hate taking electric moves. And Garchomp, while it is immune to the electric moves, gets absolutely blown away by Fairy. So I'm definitely thinking that Ferrothorn is Akka with the intent to try to take on my Tapu Koko as well as possible. So I'm just going to go for the knockoff as he goes into his Mega Pidgeot. And that thing is already at 55%. So that is absolutely fantastic for me. I'm thinking he's just going to fire off a Hurricane. So I'm going to take this opportunity to go straight into my Tapu Koko as he does Mega Evolve. And he actually roosts. So now Mega Pidgeot's back at full. But my Tapu Koko's in. Rocks are up. I can start pressuring something really hard. So I'm not going to bother over predicting right now. I'm just going to fire off a Thunderbolt. Maybe I could catch him trying to over predict. And now I'm going to go for the HP fire as first of all, I mean, Gyro Ball would do a ton of damage to me. I mean, no two ways about it. Gyro Ball would hurt, but it wouldn't knock me out. And I want to take this Ferrothorn out because as soon as I take the Ferrothorn out, I know I was saying that taking out the Mega Pidgeot would allow me to spam Earth Power, but taking out the Ferrothorn allows me to spam Sludge Wave. And admittedly, Garchomp does resist it, and I believe... No, yeah, Garchomp does resist it, but still, it would do a decent amount, and I'm not thinking that the Garchomp has any, like, leftovers or something like that. So any damage is good damage, and any spammable move with Nidoking is just one step closer to potentially winning the game. So he does consume the Akaberry, like I thought, and he goes for the knockoff. Well, I'm a Z, Coco, and that's going to do nothing, so I will be able to take out the Sparathorn with another HP fire, and I am looking really good right now. I'm loving my position, but he's going to go into his Necrozma, and I'm like, oh, crap, I do not like this thing. So I'm going to go for a Thunderbolt. That does, like, nothing. I'm pretty sure this, this is an Assault Vest Necrozma, or it's a Spadef Necrozma, but that photon geyser shows me that oh boy that's 
yeah, that's a Necrozma that I really don't want to have to deal with. So I'm just going to U-turn as I do take the Photon Geyser relatively well. I'm going to go, well, not relatively well. I take the Photon Geyser with enough to wear like a uh, Rocks plus Rough Skin will not knock me out later in the game. So I'm going to go into my Tangrowth. Goes for Photon Geyser, and that does 26 damage. And so unfortunately, with Photon Geyser's properties... I'm thinking, oh, this is a physical Necrozma because that didn't do crap to my Tangrowth. I can just stay in, fire off a Leech Seed because, again, Ferrothorn's gone, so Leech Seed is completely free. I'm going to be able to heal up damage on something, but stupidly, I let Tangrowth go down to a Heat Wave when I had my Swampert 80% health. It could have come in, taken the hit from Necrozma, gotten it even lower with Scald because I'm pretty positive this was an Assault Vest Necrozma based on the damage that I did to it and the damage output it had on my Coco. So yeah, Tangrowth goes down and now I went from being in an amazing spot to a really, really crappy one because I needed Tangrowth for Garchomp and Terrakion. Additionally, I needed it as a pivot just in general because it recovers HP by just switching out. So that was a very stupid play on my part, sacking my Tangrowth. I didn't even think about the fact that he could be mixed, which he ended up being in. Yeah, Tangrowth just goes down. So that really, really sucks. But what this does give me is an opportunity to go into my Coco and just take this Necrozma out. I'm going to go for the T-Bolt. He's not going to risk his Garchomp switching in because I could have just as easily gone for the Z-Move. And he knocked me off and saw that I didn't have an item. So he knows that I'm a Z Coco, and given the mons on his team, I'm pretty sure he knows that I'm a Ferium Z as well. So, yeah, that just sucks that I lost my Tangrowth. I went from in a great position to in a very, very volatile one, unfortunately. So he's going to go into his Terrakion, and I'm thinking, okay, he's if he's Scarfed and goes for Close Combat or Earthquake, that's fine. Needle King can take whatever hit, but he just goes for the Quick Attack, and yeah, that is 100% banded. Knowing that Terrakion's not going to stay in, I'm just going to fire off a Sludge Wave. I was just kind of a middle ground play. I was thinking, okay, I could go for Earth Power, as that covers Primarina, Garchomp, and Terrakion. I could go for Ice Beam, trying to predict the Garchomp or the Pidgeot, but I don't know, just Sledge Wave was a no drawback play. It would have hit everything. Cause I mean, he was gonna go to either Pidgeot or Primarina. Like I don't think he was gonna try to try to risk Garchomp as Earth Power was a very easy play for me to make. So I just went for the middle ground play of Sledge Wave as Mega Pidgeot does come in and I will be able to two hit KO that thing. So now Mega Pidgeot's down, Earth Power is super spammable and I should be able to get a kill when I come in against the Terrakion, but he goes into his Garchomp, and yeah, this is this is where losing my Tangrowth really sucks, because I'm thinking that this is a Scarf Garchomp, like he saw that my Needle King is Scarfed, so why would he go, oh, well, I guess, I mean, I was locked into Sludge Wave, so we you know it was just as fair, so it might not have been a Scarf Chomp, but I'm thinking that it is anyway, just based on the fact that Terrakion is banded and Primarina, if Scarfed, doesn't outspeed Tapu Koko. So I'm thinking that, okay, Garchomp is going to be Scarfed. This is going to be tricky because I not only have to sack my Swampert, I'm going to have to sack another Mon in order to try to get my Raichu in because right now the end game is potentially in sight with Raichu. I mean, I think he can one-shot everything on his team. So I'm going to go into my Tapu Koko, set up the Electric Terrain, and I could sack it, but I'm thinking that, okay, Lycanroc didn't do anything at all so I'm just going to send that thing in to die as I really don't need it at this point and if I had just sacked off my Coco he could have tried switching between like Primarina, Terrakion, and Garchomp try to wear out the electric terrain to where maybe he could be in a position with Garchomp later to sweep with Earthquake but I decided to save my Tapu Koko for that very reason and he realized that okay I still have Tapu Koko he can't switch around enough and even if he does to wear out the electric terrain I will be able to reset that up so able to knock out with Garchomp with HPI is able to knock out Primarina with a Volt Switch and Nidoking is able to come in it's confirmed banded I'm able to knock out the Terrakion with an Earth Power and we are able to bounce back from a very rough week one loss to get the 3-0 victory against Tone, and I mean, it stinks that it has to come at a friend's expense, but yeah, this is, it's a, it's a competitive game, so you gotta do what you gotta do, and Tone, that was a very good game, like, that was, 
Oof, I played horribly with Tangrowth, you exploited that well, but I was fortunately able to maneuver myself into a position where Raichu was able to clean up the game, and even Nidoking was there. I mean, I kind of wish I had T-Bolt in that position, but luckily it still knocked out the Primarina anyway, so it didn't end up mattering. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and this is Sticks signing out. Why not? See you guys.